Good morning. It has just gone 5 a.m., which means we have been up for just over 15 minutes. The reason we're up so early is because we are going on a boat tour. This one has a bit of a twist. So apparently this area of the world, and specifically the Philippines, is home to 11 different species of dolphin. So apparently, unlike other island hopping tours, this one throws in dolphin watching, which is why we're up early, because apparently this is the time of day where they're most active. I'm really excited for that. Me too. Can't wait. Let's go hopefully see some dolphins. I really hope we get to see them. Me too. But even if not, there's still going to be a lot of snorkeling and a lot of opportunities to see other marine wildlife as well. Get ready for some GoPro footage to be mixed in, by the way, consider this your warning. We just got back from our tour. It was pretty loud and quite fast paced, so we didn't have much of an opportunity to talk through everything. So we figured that we would give you a highlight reel now. We started off the day with a 20 minute motorbike ride to the McDonald's near Alona Beach, where we met a representative from our tour operator. We were then handed off to a company representative who then escorted us to the beach. We then signed our life away on a couple of forms, and then we were handed over to the captain of our boat. The first stop on our tour was dolphin watching and we were super super excited about this this is why we ended up doing the tour however there were at least 20 other boats maybe more who were all doing the same tour we did spot a pot of dolphins but what would happen is that all of the boats would just race towards the pot of dolphins almost surround them and because there were so many boats, it was very difficult to actually see the dolphins. We did get to see them jumping up out of the water and swimming around. It looked like they were having a fun time, but I'm sure they're really just trying to get away from all of the loud boats. And this probably happened three or four times. I felt so bad for the dolphins and I just wanted to see them for longer so I wish we'd been able to spend more time there and that there had been fewer boats, like we were more spread out, because then they wouldn't have been as scared, probably. Yeah, you could tell that the pod was trying to get away from the loud noises, and the reason for that is that dolphins and whales obviously use echolocation to communicate, and that gets really disrupted by loud noises, especially loud engines. So the fact that there were so many boats all clamoring for space it really kind of helped. I think if we knew that this is how we were going to be dolphin watching, we probably wouldn't have done this tour. No, it's not quite the experience we were hoping for. Certainly, if we're going to be looking out to do dolphin and or whale watching in the future, then we're going to keep a much closer eye on exactly what that experience is for the animals in question as well. Our next stop was going to a marine reserve on Balikasag Island. No idea if I'm pronouncing that right. For this, we were ushered off of our large boat to then go onto a bunch of smaller boats. In order to give us a bit of a transition between all of them, then we were ushered to a restaurant. It seemed like there was kind of a restaurant per tour boat. There was an option to pre-order food ahead of going snorkeling, but honestly, the menu prices, even for the most basic items, were more than we had paid for any meal up to now since we've been in the Philippines. So we opted not to do that and instead decided to get a coffee for the two of us when we got back, which actually ended up being relatively inexpensive. We were then kitted out with snorkels. These were included in the cost of what we were paying. However, the quality was, let's say mixed. You got a perfectly good functioning snorkel. Mine, was barely watertight for any more than a minute. 
So not the greatest experience, especially considering that the quality of the gear that we've had on other tours has been superb. We were then divided up into groups of four. Each of those groups of four then got into a smaller kind of little canoe to then go out and snorkel with turtles and with fish. Now, we were given a guide who took us out in these canoe or smaller boats and we were taken out a hundred meters from the beach at the absolute most. When we were in mobile, we just swam out ourselves. And in all fairness, I think that that would have been the better solution in this case. It was walkable, swimmable, like not difficult at all because it was so overcrowded with these small boats and the hundreds of people who were on them all crowded around watching a turtle. But because there were so many people, you were being kicked by people's feet accidentally, of course. You were being knocked in the head or body by the small boats accidentally again, of course but it just wasn't an enjoyable experience. And again, the same thing I can imagine for these animals, having such a huge concentration of tourists hovering over them at the exact same time must be very stressful. We've never gotten so up close to a turtle, but at what cost? So we watched the turtle with many other tourists for a short amount of time. We got back into the small boat and were rowed 25 meters mm -hmm. to where there's a very large concentration of reef fish. And the reason there's such a huge concentration of reef fish is because they were feeding them. So that was super unnatural. Again, it was incredible to see the variety of reef fish. We were very close to them, but at what cost? It was not a natural experience and we never want to be disturbing nature. I would rather see fewer fish, fewer turtles, have to stay further away, but not disturb their natural habitat or behavior than what we experienced. Again, it's just so many people jostling for the best position and it's not been as pleasant an experience as we had doing island hopping tours where we snorkeled in El Nido and Corone. Once that was all done, we then came back to the island. While we didn't order any food ourselves and just opted for coffees, there were a lot of the rest of the tour group who had ordered food. So there was some time to get the food out to them, for them to enjoy it, for us to enjoy our coffees, and then get back on the boat. And we mingled with a lovely Irish couple, so that was nice. Yes. Our last stop was called Virgin Island, and it's basically just this huge walkable sandbar in the middle of the water. And it seems simple, which it is, but it was actually my favorite experience, probably yours too, because it was unique to us. Neither of us had experienced a sandbar before. And also, even though there were the same number of boats and people, at this location as there had been dolphin watching and also snorkeling with turtles and fish, we had so much more room to spread out so you didn't feel this chaotic energy or you didn't feel overcrowded. So we just kind of walked around the sandbar and then we actually just sat in the water on the sand and relaxed for the 20 or 30 minutes that we stayed there. And after that, we then came home. The heavens opened again on our 20 minute ride back to the hotel, but we are now into a dry set of and now talking to you about this. Overall, getting to see these kinds of animals is always special. Like no matter which way you dress it up, seeing dolphins is incredible, seeing turtles also fantastic, and the abundance of life that you can see in the waters in this part of the world is nuts. And also the fact that the water is so clear that they are this visible to you as well, even just from the surface, is really something that you should not miss if you do come to the Philippines. However, because of the fact that we have had some amazing experiences on other islands, 
which did make it feel a bit more personal, a bit more exclusive, like you didn't really have to kind of bat off other people to get to enjoy the experience of being around this amazing marine life, then I think it's fair to say that we probably wouldn't do this again, nor would we recommend this in comparison to the other snorkeling trips that we've taken while we've been in the Philippines. I also think that the reason that we were so turned off is because I felt like we were disturbing the animals in their natural habitat, and I would never want to do that. So it wasn't even just the amount of boats and people. They're totally linked with one another as well, Mm -hmm. but I just don't want to interfere and harm the animals for my enjoyment. Me neither. I think for both of those reasons, then... Like, even though we did get a decent price as far as island hopping tours go, this was 1,000 pesos each, so $25 per person, it would still be something where I would say keep your money mm-hmm. and do something else on the island. You can get far better island hopping and snorkeling experiences on other islands in the Philippines. And Bohol is an amazing island, so there are lots of other options and things to do, and places willing to take your money on this island. Good morning. morning. From Bohol. We are checking out today, but before that we had another delicious breakfast. We're not going to head towards the ferry terminal just yet though, because we have one final place to see, which is called the Hinagdanang Cave. Hinagdanang literally translated means ladder and the origin story gave this cave its name. There was a farmer who was working his land and he came across these two small holes, so he was obviously very curious. He ended up picking up a stone and throwing it down and he heard a splash at the bottom. So he decided to build a ladder, hence the name Hinagdanang. And what he obviously found at the bottom was this beautiful cave that had a freshwater lagoon and the stalagmite and stalactite rock formation. Apparently this place also has its place in history because it is so said that the cave was used as a point of refuge when the Japanese tried to invade these islands during World War II. So yeah, it's not just a pretty place to be apparently, but it's also got some historical significance. So we are excited to go check this place out. Let's head out. So we just got two tickets. You can either pay just to enter the cave or you can pay an additional fee to go swimming as well in the lagoon. We have opted to do that because why not? And for that, it's 125 pesos per person or 250 for the pair of us, which equates to just over $6 Canadian. overall that was pretty cool as you go in then you're kind of shouted at by stall owners trying to get you to purchase their wares which is a little bit aggressive but as soon as you actually go down into the cave then it's actually quite nice generally speaking there are a lot of people trying to get just their photo ops around the pool but there's only a few people that have actually bought a swimming ticket so when you actually get down to the water 
then it's kind of just you and a very select number of other people. So it kind of feels a little bit more exclusive and just a calmer experience. The water is actually a perfect temperature also in contrast to the cave, so it just kind of cools you down. It's lovely. Yeah, the cave is kind of humid and because it was only a 15 minute walk from our hotel, it was nice and refreshing to get in the cool water when we arrived. Overall, I think that was a pretty positive experience. I think it was just really unique. Like how many times can you say that you've gone swimming in a lagoon in a cave? Yeah, I think it's definitely worth going and it was a really nice way to close out our time here in Bohol. I think that after having done what we've done, I would say you need a full day because if you woke up at seven and were at the Chocolate Hills by 8.30, you could then do that, the man-made forest, twin hanging bridge, tarsiers, and then end your day with this and still be done probably by around 4 p.m. And I think that would be a really good way to see a lot of the island. I'm sure there is more to do here, but I think that would probably be a pretty complete trip here. We are now going to have a shower, pack up the last of our things and check out. And then I think we're going to head over towards the ferry port to then get a boat back to Cebu. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.